All right, let's get to it. After you log into your account, you will see your project manager. This is the window that contains your folders and projects. In the top right corner, you'll see the name of your account. And if you'd like to switch, simply select it and click on Log Off. In the same drop-down menu, you're able to change your password and access your databases. This computer has only one host but you could add more by clicking on the connect button and inserting the relevant host information. Under the account name in the top right, you have access to a few superficial controls. You can increase or decrease the size of your thumbnails. You can choose in which order to display the thumbnails. In this case, I'm displaying them by date modified. Clicking on the next icon allows me to display additional information about the projects resolutions and the amount of timelines associated with the project, the amount of projects within a folder, and last date modified. I can also choose to switch between thumbnail and list view. List view displays additional information about the projects, their resolution, their frame rate, the date they were created, the date they were modified, and any additional notes you would like to make. On the right hand side is a magnifying glass that enables you to search your projects. What you type into the search bar is filtered by the criteria on the right-hand side. In this case, I can search by either name or format. Folders are identified by what looks like a stack of projects on top of each other. To access a folder, double-click on it. To exit a folder, go into the bottom left and click on the preceding folder name. In this case, it's Home. Right-clicking on a folder or a project reveals the contextual menu. This gives you a lot of control over the projects and folders. When I click on the gray area of the project manager, I can create new projects and new folders. You can also create a new project or a new folder using the buttons at the bottom of the interface. When I click on the project itself, I have options to open it. I can even open it in read-only mode if I'm hesitant about making changes to the project after I launch it. This will ensure that no changes are kept after I close the project down. There are import and export options in the contextual menu. This is because, unlike other NLEs, DaVinci Resolve does not encourage people to share their projects based on the project files visible in their Explorer or Finder windows. Instead, they encourage them to export their projects from inside the project manager and likewise to import projects into the project manager. In this case, I can export my film as a DRP file. The DRP file can be told to include stills, EDLs, LUTs, and audio information. When the export is complete, the project will appear as a tiny DRP file at the destination that you have specified. I can then import the file and will be prompted to give the project a unique project name. If I already have a project open, I can open the project manager, right click on one of the other projects in it, and load the configurations to the project I currently have open. This is great if you're working on a project that's very similar to something you've done previously, especially episodic work. I could also access the configuration details of other users' projects. If you are uncomfortable with the idea of other people having access to your project files and settings, uh, make sure you don't keep your footage on the same computer and potentially use a protected database. If you open a project in DaVinci Resolve and decide you want to access a different project, you can click on the little house icon in the bottom right corner of the interface and gain access to your project manager again. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.